Hey guys, Jay here and welcome back to the channel. So I'm currently preparing for the Twitter space. We're going to be holding at 8 p.m. UK time. It may start around 10, 15 minutes later. We are arranging some stuff behind the scenes and, and just making sure everybody's got a fair shot to come up and have their say uninterrupted. So the USTC situation is definitely heating up. And, and what I'm looking for is key signs currently in the market. And we're looking to see if anybody's coming over from Luna 2.0 and maybe sneaking back because, hey, you don't want to be the last person to make this decision. And I think this is going to start to sink in more and more and more as this situation unfolds and TFL tries to keep us all on the hook, interested and running around in circles and not really becoming actionable. So let's take a look at this article, which is really what kickstarted my thought trail here and, and specifically what we're going to be going through in the space. But Terra Classic highly debated proposal after TFO and SEC settlement. The Terra Luna Classic community started voting on a highly debated proposal to increase the validator set on the blockchain. The move comes after Terraform Labs and Duquan agreed to settle with the US SEC for 4.5 billion. The proposal aims to bring Luna V2 validators to Terra Classic, Classic after the TFL and SEC settlement, bolstering the network's decentralization and benefiting the LUNC community. <clears throat> so something we said, well, specifically I said during this space and my point of view on this in videos recently has been, we really don't need to make an effort to go out there and try to convince anybody. All we need to do is turn the lights on, mow the grass and make sure we're pulling the weeds out as we're doing that. So it looks nice, it looks presentable and it looks like a place they would want to be. And this is what this proposal is doing. We're becoming actionable. We're creating things to attract that part of their community. So this is really good. And it's good to see the perception of the overall media targeting this really important because perception is everything absolutely everything these news articles reach hundreds of thousands possibly millions of people daily so this is really interesting it's going to show that there's a lot more interest in Luna classic than there is Luna 2.0 and something to take into account when it comes down to the whole Luna 2.0 community the majority of them would rather have a stable coin ecosystem with all of these amazing na country native stables attached to it and they would rather probably give that another shot and with people like Igor coming forward with his kind of proposal he's he's thinking of and what he's saying on Twitter at the moment I think it's a really interesting time especially with what's going on currently so before we start discussing the USTC thing the one thing we won't see is obviously USTC moving about to give us signs of, of really our validators coming back. What's going to give us signs are substantial buys, swaps, which we won't always see. We won't always be able to track. But what we can track is the staked coins pool. So as you can see, on the 15th of this month, the pool was sitting at 987 billion LUNC staked. Now, what I want to do is flick over to the dashboard view. We'll go back to that in a second. I'll explain what that is um, tool wise. But if we look at the delegations now, we are literally just below one trillion again. So it's, there's been a substantial inflow into delegations wherever that's gone. Who knows? But what we do know is, is that coins seem to be flowing back in and I expect us to get above this one trillion mark. So Vegas raised a few points about Lunk Dash and, and different things we should implement and, and the fact that he misses the ability to have a graphing system uh, for things like the, the balances for the pools and stuff like that. <clears throat> what we've done is a, a, a far more smarter and intelligent system. Instead, what we have is balances. So if you've got a wallet address, all you need to do is put it in here submit it and it will lay it out in a graph view and you can even choose between having LUNC, USTC and even what delegations that wallet's got specifically this being the staked coins pool it doesn't do any delegations so it doesn't have any but you see what I'm saying here we do have those tools Vegas was asking for they they are there uh, there's just not a lot of people that want to share this system out there, which I totally understand. And uh, <clears throat> I accept that, but this is there. It, it works with all wallets across board. Like I said, you can switch between 
all of the different native assets and I hope in the future start introducing stables uh, those other native stables and meme coins hopefully as well as time goes on so let's keep this moving and let's take a look at why I think the USTC repeg along with all of this interest that's clearly coming back to the blockchain is the the reserves and specifically that USTC in these reserves and then what's in that digital schedule of assets released by the SEC and the courts of Delaware. So for me, <clears throat> if I was to look at Luna 2.0 and LUNC, I would say, what's the difference? We've got a story. We have got the possible greatest comeback in crypto history. An algorithmic stable coin that died and came back because two communities united together. That is a story people want to hear. That is a story worth fighting for. It's something worth pushing forward. Luna 2.0 understand this and a majority of the LUNC community understand this. And we all know if we could fix USTC, a lot of our problems would be solved moving forward. So let's say, for example, we've got all of these wallets in that wallet list. What I think is very important, I'm going to raise this in the Twitter space uh, shortly this evening, is the fact that the LFG reserves being 1.85 billion uh, UST and some LUNC as well. And then also what's on this digital schedule of assets. When I last priced it out, uh, the equivalent was just below 1 billion USTC. So let's 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 round it to some kind of number and say, let's put it to 2.6 to 2.7 billion USTC that could be gone instantly from maybe two wallets. Okay, that's a considerable amount of the USTC supply simply wiped out. And surely, surely this makes it so much easier, right, for a repeg to happen because there's been one constant variable throughout this whole USTC conversation, the swings, the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights, is the fact that they would need to remove a lot of the coins from the circulating supply so they've got the ability to remint them later. And that's how this situation is going to work. And that's how it's probably go going to have to play out. Something's going to have to be minted. Now, what I definitely, definitely am against is Emerge. Emerge shouldn't happen. If they want to come back, we'll turn the lights on, we'll mow the grass, we'll attract them, they can come back. But I think it's really important with everything that's going on that we don't just think to ourselves, considering the size of the community and how many different people there are working on different things. We're at a point now where Terraport can do what Terraport's doing. Uh, the USTC people can do what the USTC people, the gaming sector can do what they do. The NFT market can do what they do. The shillers can shill, the fudders can fud. Everybody can simply work on their own stuff that they enjoy and they think is worth bringing to the table. And that's what this decentralized ecosystem and ethics behind this is all about. So I definitely think we're at the point where unity is everything we need moving forward because we all want the same thing. But I've never felt so bullish about a USTC repeg and I've never felt like it's been so close before. And honestly, if you don't know who Igor is, I'll try to leave a link to his Twitter. Go and look at what he's been going through, what he's saying. The interest is definitely there. Chris Armani had to outline it specifically at Cosmos first, and that's how they would outreach their community mostly, and that's where they got most of their information because TFL communication was poor, was the fact that they wouldn't be relaunching a stable coin. And a lot of people did not like that because once again, DeFi has a huge gap and a requirement for some kind of reliable stable coin asset. With XRP trying to dive its way into this sector, with a stable coin asset, it shows just how big that gap is. So once again, with all of the brilliant minds being part of this decentralized ecosystem, once again, Terra could be the center point of the Cosmos ecosystem. Folks, I hope you really liked my thought pattern there. I thought it was really worth talking about and, and putting forward so other people can talk about it and you can dissect it and you can start to think about all of these different things. But it's a considerable amount of the USTC supply that's simply and hopefully going to either burn be blacklisted which will just lead to the same outcome as burning at the end of all of this so it's really important to understand we're moving in the right direction coins are clearly coming over to this blockchain and with luna classic being at a point where it's relatively cheap to to ape in with a bag validators and like i said they're probably not going to want to be the last ones and they're probably not going to want to be the first ones but the race will begin at some point and i think it will just become a free-for-all 
with us upping the active set back to 130, we are creating a nice environment. Tax to gas is underway. They've begun that. This is really good. And we've got genuine labs. We've got all of these different things going on. It's looking absolutely great. Try, try tune into the space today. What I'm going to do, they're always recorded. They get posted on Twitter. I'm going to post copies on YouTube as well. I did check the comments as I always do, even though I don't reply a lot of the time. But I noticed a lot of you said thank you for uploading the Twitter spaces of Chris Armani and TFL. You don't have Twitter. And, and that's exactly why I do those things. But I will, from this point onwards, ensure to upload each and every weekly space for everybody. Like I was saying at the beginning, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and uh, hit the notifications bell to stay informed. And other than that, stay safe, stay humble, stay aware. And as always, catch you in the next one. Ciao!